Greetings everyone, this is Freya and Joy and as you see I am at M Arts in this is in Mwolomba on the east coast of Australia. And today I'm gonna to do an interview with an artist who have her shop and gallery here inside here. And I say welcome to you all to listen to this interesting interview now. Welcome. So I say welcome Helen Otway, yes. artist uh, who have her shop and you call it uh, atelier or gallery? Gallery. Well, it's a studio. Studio. So I work in here plus I display my work here. Yeah. And this is in uh, this um, uh, studio is sited in Mwolomba on the east coast of Australia. Yes. So, um, do you live here? Well, I live locally. I live on the Tweed Coast. I live in Casarina, which is probably about 25 kilometers from Mwolomba. Oh, so yeah. It's within the area. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 This is an amazing, beautiful area. Yeah. I, I think it's the most beautiful in the whole beautiful <laughs> Australia. Well, it's a little bit of a hidden gem. I don't think many people outside of this area quite know about, well, I don't think they know about Mwollomba. Yeah. Especially if they're from interstate. Yeah. Um, and the Tweed Coast is so stunning. Um, yeah. And we're very lucky that we get local tourists. But, yeah. yeah. So this you, you painted now here, most of it in the studio now is from this area. So this you have uh, just... Um, um, we see around you here these yes. three paintings. Yeah. They are not from exactly no. here. They are from uh, also Australia, yeah. but another part. Yes. So most of my work is um, featuring featuring um, the coastline and the hinterland around here. Yeah. But these three works, I actually did them a couple of years ago now before I moved up here. Yeah. And they're from South Australia in a place called Kangaroo Island. Yeah. Um, and what struck me with these, with this scenery, is the vivid colours, the blues and the rich browns and the coppers, um, and how extraordinary the formations of the rocks were. So I really wanted to paint these pictures um, yeah. that I had taken photographs of. Yeah. And they're actually in a gouache. So most of my work is oil, but I did these in a gouache paint, which is a thick watercolour. Yeah. And the reason for that is because the colours of the gouache are very vivid and very striking. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to capture. Yeah. 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 So, you, that's, this is, uh, yeah, you know I'm an artist too. So, yes. I also like to do this sometimes, have pictures. And then, of course, you interpret it your way. Yes. But you use the picture as an inspiration. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. So this is, uh, I love stones. This is beautiful. Yeah. So how did you begin to, to paint uh, once in your life? Oh, okay. So, well, I guess I was, um, I started off my career as an art teacher, actually. So I was, I'm a teacher. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I started off as a, an art teacher and majored in art. Yeah. Um, and did art studies right throughout high school and, and university as well. Was that in Melbourne? Yes, it was in Melbourne. Yeah. Um, but then I actually started, uh, or my career took off, so art took a back seat, unfortunately. And then around about 2014, I started um, working with some well-known artists in Australia. Yeah. Um, one of them in 2016 that I worked with was Graham Drendel, and yeah. he's a figurative painter. Mm -hmm. So I did classes with him. I've also done classes with Ben Smith, who is a local artist. Yeah. Um, he had a studio here in, in this complex. Yeah. Um, and that's been fantastic as well. So I guess really um, I have honed my practice probably in the last six years yeah and probably now that I have moved away in, to some degree from education it's more my life now oh yeah so you feel that you can go more into the art world for your own experience to then express it than you could when you were also working as a teacher because there's a lot of planning work and all yes. this 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, the two complement each other. Um, as a teacher, yeah. I've been a principal as well. Yeah. I've always encouraged art yeah. um, in the school, whether it be digital art, whether it be visual arts, any form of arts. Yeah. So all my schools have been um, the ones that I've been a principal in have had a beautiful culture of art yeah. in them. And for that reason, I've never really let go of but my own practice probably has only sort of started to develop more since about 2014 and yeah. more so 2016 and on. Yeah. yeah, wonderful, beautiful. So this, uh, you talked about this, uh, to cooperate with these other artists. Yeah. Uh, do you do that now still or was that like a period? Um, well, they were classes that I was taking. So uh -huh. I've had two years of classes with a artist by the name of Graham Drendel, and yeah. he's quite well regarded. Oh, you mean you took classes from them? I took them. classes uh -huh. from him, I okay. learned from him. Yeah. And the same with the artist who's in this um, complex here, Ben Smith. Yeah. I've also been doing classes with him. But you were a teacher. I was an art teacher. But, but you had the other techniques they had to teach yeah, you. Yeah, and oh. I didn't develop my art teaching as such. Mm. Um, over that period, I became a, a generalist teacher, yeah. then a, an, an assistant principal, and then a principal. So, yeah. you know, having that real, um, that tuition from a fine artist, yeah. I yeah. think is incredibly valuable. Yeah, Someone yeah. Someone who's actually practicing, whereas I wasn't a practicing artist back then. Yeah. Having that education or those, that training from a practicing, well-regarded artist yeah. is so different to, say, going to... College, yeah. university. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Do you get so much more when you have contact in physical life with another artist and they can uh, teach you from their point of view? Yes. It's, uh, uh, do you think, uh, like, it's also about you are uh, actually, you, you, you as a being, you are light and love, uh, so to say, if yes. we take it very yes. shortly. But so we have this also communication uh, through our energies. Yes. I mean, as artists, we, we are kind of uh, uh, sisters and brothers in that sense. Yes. Even if we work in different techniques and yes. do our work in different ways. But when you meet another artist, you also have some kind of uh, wor uh, wordless, uh, without word communication. Yes. So it's, uh, uh, you think, like I do, I suppose, my question is, do you think <laughs> it's uh, nice also to have other artists sometimes and uh, do works together for longer, shorter period? Because it happens things you don't know about in the beginning, what's going to happen in this cooperation. Yeah, and I think those, um, well, yes, the collaborations, but also just working side by side or within an area like this precinct where we have a variety of different artists working here. It's nice to sort of pop out of the studio and have those conversations or even have somebody within the studio come in and comment or... Um, you know, gauge your feelings about something. So, those, yes, they're wordless, but I think the words also yeah. are, are wonderful because, Absolutely. you know, when you start articulating your thoughts and you t start articulating um, different ideas, it's when those words come out that you actually start really understanding what you're thinking because without the words, it's kind of a bit, you know, um, unclear. Yeah. Yeah. So I think both work beautifully. Yeah. The, the absolutely. Wordless and the, the conversation work yeah. and collaboration quite nicely. Yeah, it's really interesting. It's interesting. This because when you when you articulate and say things yes. you have to be conscious and you can listen to yourself. And uh, you you yes. will you will in some way uh, make it stronger yes. when you say it loud out. Yes. Yeah. When you attach a word to a thought yeah. or a, a thing, yeah. it kind of gives it more substance to some degree. Yeah. Um, so that articulation is really your reflective process coming through. Yeah. Um, and it is, like you said, when you say it out loud, you think, oh, that's actually what I've been thinking, or that's what I've been doing, or that's what I'm still agonizing with, or that's what I'm still learning. Yeah. Um, so it's great to have those conversations with It is. Artists, like yourself. Yeah. 
I have to ask you, have you thought about this uh, it, uh, that is called to uh, redefine yourself or redefine yourself as an artist maybe or yourself? Uh, it, it, you, you choose what you like to, if you like to say something about that. Yeah, look, definitely. As I said, I've been in education for most of my career and moved up the scale, up the ladder quite well. Yeah. Um, this change um, in chapters for me yeah. is about redefining myself yeah. and trying to align myself back with the values that I hold, even as a young child or as a young adult. Yeah. Um, and being able to sort of think about, well, what are my values in yeah. life and what yeah. do I hold strong to me? Yeah. And this is allowing me to do that, to come back to the love of art, yeah. come back to the love of um, expression in work in paintings and yeah. tying that with a community of other like-minded people yeah um, and yes absolutely re redefining myself is exactly what i am doing right at the moment yeah do you find it challenging sometimes yeah. to redefine yourself yeah because <laughs> yeah, you go in these you know ups and downs you think you, you you found what you want and then you know you, you still get frustrated you still wonder you know um, are there other possibilities or other ways of being yeah so there's still those challenges it's not as if oh my goodness i've now found myself i know exactly what to do it is so you think it is a development and you don't stop develop do you are absolutely. in that process absolutely do so you think it's a, it's a part of the artistic expression to not stop to challenge yourself and to yeah. not stop to develop yeah and my artistic works have um, changed over time. Um, and I am still trying to do different things because um, I'm not ready to stop and say, this is my style, this is my um, way of doing things. Wonderful. Um, I love that. <laughs> constantly you know, yeah. looking at other ways of doing things. Yeah. And often when people come into my studio, they look around and they say, is this all your work? Or yeah. Are other people's works, and I say no, they're all mine. Yeah. It's just that I'm developing and changing and trialing. I think things. that's wonderful. Yeah. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Because we. Yeah, that's wonderful. When you can be that kind of, for me, it's like open-minded and open-hearted yes. to be able to not be stuck at, or feel that you are so comfortable yes. with one style, so you are a little bit f afraid to go outside. Yes. You have to be a little bit brave yes. to change your style sometimes yes. and to show that to people yes. because you will be questioned. Yeah. from some people yeah. and you have to be still open-minded and open-hearted yeah. to answer those questions yeah. like you do now yeah. <laughs> so, and when you're going to have do you have like one so a year or something your uh, some uh, uh, exhibition solo mm -hmm. exhibition mm -hmm. well i've got an exhibition happening actually just across the road yeah in a, um, uh, cafe. Yeah. So that's happening June the nineteenth. Oh, wonderful! It's for a month. If I'm still here, I'm con ab absolutely going to come and. Sh um, and then you works again, again. A What's the name of the cafe? Keith. Keith. Keith Mwolomba. Keith Mwolomba yes. at the nineteenth. Yes. Of, of June. Of June. Now that's probably the install day, so there might be install opening, day. Yeah, there might be an opening. A couple of days after that. The one. Venissage is like maybe 21st, 20th. Possibly, possibly. The, yeah. Whatever the Saturday is. That's probably but then it's a cafe so people yeah. can come and look there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah Wonderful. It's, it's just um, sort of over the road. Wonderful. Um, so not too far away. Very nice. Um, and I have had other exhibitions, but having just moved up here, I'm still, you know, finding my way. Yeah. I've only just been here now a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I'm so grateful for having this interview with you, Helen. <laughs> Thank you. So grateful for that. That was a wonderful, uh, wonderful, interesting uh, things here now to know about yourself as an artist and how you work with your art. Uh, because this is all about creativity. Yes. And creativity is uh, w very, very, how do you say, a very important power yes to use uh, because it's it's like an uh, it's like injection of uh, inspiration and love and all this yes so when 
we all in this creative process like you are now. Yes. It's it's uh, really so it's so good because we influence other people also. Yes. You influence other people in a good way. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you so much, <laughs> and I wish you all luck in the future, and I hope I see you again. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for listening to this interesting interview with Helen here in Mwulomba in Australia. And I see you soon again with next coming episode of this series in YouTube I have about to make an impact in the world by creativity. Thank you.